You know, I was thinking that every person on this planet was and is born innocent and pure. There are no bad genes, no bad DNA, therefore no bad people. We have bad habits, bad behaviours and terrible traditions. This is a product of the environment, the surroundings, the education and role models and teachers and influencers. Moulding and contorting their version of us whilst leaving the real you behind. Then simply, somewhere along the journey, hearts get broken, wounds get ripped open, scars are left and thus these habits are formed or cemented. Behaviours are learned and then thus are repeated. In infancy, early childhood, or if you're lucky enough later on in life, pain and trauma and memories often turn people towards their shadows, their demons, towards the darkness, finding it easier to appease and fade away, cutting themselves out of what we call society and only allowing their plans and fears to fester, maybe even define them, thus creating a cycle of generational pain and confusion, almost like a groundhog day where you climb out of one hole only to slip a few feet further along into another. Shit, I remember doing that so many times. Maybe I even still do it. It's only once we realise and know this truth that we can still fix this, that we can release our anger and our pain along with any sense of responsibility for how others behave, even for how we have behaved. Once we realise this and truly acknowledge it, things become less painful and more simple. We are only in control of ourselves and what we put out there. We cannot control others, and we especially cannot control their feelings or their own so-called demons and darkness. We cannot save people as hard as we wish that we could. However, we can love them sincerely. We can support and respect them enough to save themselves. And this is the highest expression of our essence as far as I'm concerned, and it extends to all species. The most basic respect is often the least effort to provide. Of course, there are always cases where we can save someone in a burning building or a frozen lake samples aside. Most people just want their freedoms respected, to be heard or to be left alone, to express themselves or to go in their own way, to evolve or to regress or neither and nothing at all, as long as on their own terms at whatever simplistic or complicated level that that may be. And this is where our inaction can in fact have the most effect. Choosing to abstain from the exploitation and oppression isn't something you lose, it's something you're no longer taking from someone else somewhere else. In the same way that you no longer take money from your mother's purse isn't a loss to you, it's just that you're no longer stealing. Instead, if we choose to be truly awake, aware and conscious in this life, and of all life, to walk the path of our hearts and embrace the higher wisdom and harmony which surrounds us, but also which could surround us, then holding on to anger and resentment is not the way forward, but only trapping ourselves in the past, like chaining ourselves to memories we no longer wish to retain, for the hurt is always in the past, and fear is always in the future. Often we think forgiveness means that we can leave ourselves open and vulnerable to hurt again, so we close our hearts and we pack our wounds with anger, and we build the biggest, baddest castles around, so tall and well defended to keep everyone out, but in reality, all that ever does is shut us away from the world. The truth is, forgiveness goes beyond the material planes of who did what to who and when. It goes beyond judgement and human understanding. Forgiveness can be more cosmic in nature, more powerful than the deed which needed forgiving. And sometimes this is momentarily displayed by simply being happy for someone that you love, even if you're not the one benefiting from that love, or letting go of a situation that can no longer be rectified. Forgiveness is easy in fact, especially when compared to forgiveness of ourselves, but we must. We must accept the recognition that hate cannot heal us and anger cannot save us. They only hold us back. It is only respect, love and understanding which will usher us through into the light of our own hearts and into the new world showing for the first time what it is to be civilised. We will respond to light from our darkness for the entire time that we are unhealed and unresolved within ourselves and with our own traumas and scars. It is only when we realise and focus on the light that we pull ourselves back out and finally appreciate the things around us, the things we always had. It is true that we can only ever appreciate the light after the darkness. It is very human of us to make everything about ourselves, but it is possible to witness paths of others from a distance and still keep your heart and mind open, to watch your parents or grandparents share the love of one another after decades, to remind you that it does exist, that it is only the word that may have lost its meaning, but the power, the feeling, it's all there, to watch free living beings coexist, flee danger or drink together from a watering hole, predator and prey and realise that the basic respect for life exists all over, except within humanity. We are the worst of everything that's ever happened, but at the same time we are the best too and the only ones truly capable of saving everyone else. Is it possible for you to see the intricacies of our nature, our true nature, the beauty of it and the loss of connection that has caused so many to turn away from cohabitation, to fear it even? Because that's the real tragedy here, to give up on the purest and deepest form of peace, empathy and togetherness which ever could exist on this earth. Veganism is the only way. 
only truth. Everything, everywhere else is just an illusion or a distraction refraining us from the world that we could have and the lives that we could lead. When we heal ourselves, we no longer fuel the cycle of hurt and trauma. We step outside of it, acting as a guide for others to find their way. We have a choice to contribute to the confusion, to perpetuate or refuse violence, to support or oppose exploitation. We can rise above it and become forces of healing in a world that needs our hearts and understanding and most of all our basic respect more than ever. I know this is the kind of person you are. I know this is you, your soul, if that's what you want to call it. You don't have to become it or change anything to be it. You already are. It's you. You just need to remember. You just need to see it from another angle, another point of view. The longer you hold on to the pain, the longer you hold on to the ignorance, the what ifs, the conveniences, the habits, the longer you linger in the past, when all that matters is the present, all that matters is the now, all that matters is what you do from here, from this moment and onwards. You can make a change which instantly benefits and reshapes the world around you for so many others and all it takes is for you to hold on to that understanding of when you were at your lowest, your weakest and filled with darkness. Take that and combine it with your knowledge of the opposite. When you have lived and loved and experienced life to the maximum, you felt empowered and fulfilled. Consider the huge difference between those things in your own life and then extrapolate those feelings and principles a little further to realise that the difference between heaven and hell, light and dark, good and evil, master and slave, heartache or heart skip, or life and death, literally, for so many others, is you and the decisions that you make, the respect that you choose not to extend. To them, you are everything that your marvellous, despicable brains could ever conjure up to be afraid of, but this time it's not imaginary, it's reality, every single second of every single day. And the moment that I realised that, I changed it, I changed me, so should you, so can you.